Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Ah, oh, that's better. Protectyourbubble.com. Proud sponsors of Swipe on Sky News. You're watching Swipe. Coming up. Watch out. New timepieces from the original crowdfunded company. We take a look at the flat pack go kart made of wood. And we try out a few games for your phone or tablet. Welcome to Swipe. This week from Barcelona at the Mobile World Congress, simply the biggest gathering of the mobile tech industry anywhere in the world. At this year's show, we've seen plenty of smart handsets, smart tablets, smart applications by the dozen. But a particular focus was new smart watches. It's a beautiful color screen, but e-paper means that it doesn't use that much battery power. Pebble is a Kickstarter phenomenon. At the end of February, they asked for half a million dollars investment. They passed the million dollar mark in just 40 minutes. So this is the main watch base. Mm -hmm. um, you can press the down button to see what's coming up next. A meeting, the weather, calendar, um, and you can see what just happened. If Pebble watches use a functional square face, Huawei have gone a more circular route. Their watch is designed as a piece of jewelry, even bearing a classic face, albeit an electronic one. The brief was very much to design a traditional uh, and classic watch, you know, a fashion, a timepiece. And this uh, has a lot of traditional watch elements. For example, there's the, the top ring and the crown, and also the case back. And it's, but it's interesting to note the case back is made out of metal. And a lot of other smartwatches, the actual case back is plastic. So this gives it very much, very much a luxury feel. And within a matter of hours after you've watched this program, we may learn more about Apple's timely offering, first introduced last September. I don't think we feel threatened. I think we feel um, it's incredibly exciting, to be honest. We've been working on this for seven years, and now the world's attention is focusing on smartwatches. I think this is our time to, to shine um, and to really tell the story about what we've been working on for so many years. And talking of Apple rivalry, the iPhone 6 came under attack at MWC from their South Korean rival Samsung. The Galaxy S6 is not so much a rival as a mirror model, aping Apple's dimensions and functionality in many ways, but superior in others, they say. We've had a look at some of the things that are really key for people in the smartphone usage. It's a mature market now. People know what they like, people know what they want. We've really tried to answer those questions from ground zero on this one. Well, this is HTC's flagship phone for 2015, the M9. Very similar form factor, different materials used, and a softer metal edge, they say, to make the phone easier to hold. The user interface has changed, and it's clever now. When you fire up the phone at home, it offers you the home apps on the home screen. In the car, motoring apps. And when you get to the office, it offers you your work apps. Also in Barcelona, Ford were suggesting we get out of their cars and onto an e-bike. And they have an app for that. Uh, it has haptic features on the handlebars so that as a car approaches you, it will buzz. Uh, you can plan your trip using an application on a mobile phone. And then as you're riding the bike, it will tell you when you need to turn. It'll turn the signals on for you. Uh, it has auto-grade uh, headlamps and, and uh, brakes. Staying on two wheels, here's a demo of state-of-the-art sensor technology, taking sports to new heights. So what we want to do is do 3D motion tracking for action sports. So where GPS would only give you speed and any vertical was five meters at best with accuracy, we needed to see it to three millimeter precision. We didn't know exactly how high we jumped. So we created a device that has dual constellation GPS, it was also packed with a bunch of inertial sensors, accelerometers, gyroscope, magnetometer, barometric pressure sensor. So what you're getting in essence is like HD GPS is what we like to call it. Back on four wheels, more ubiquitous connectivity on show at the Vodafone stand. And of course in the car space, in the mobile space, telematics is the real theme of the show this year. This unit is being put into every Porsche at the factory level from the get-go and then the accompanying app will means you can check on the car, change the car, modify its behavior including 
putting the heater on. So imagine this, it's a cold morning, you want the car to be nice and warm, you can fire up the heater while you have your breakfast. Later, we'll review the latest mobile games. But first, here's a roundup of some of the stories you may have missed over the last few days. Ubisoft's working on a tablet video game designed to help people with a lazy eye. Players put on red and blue glasses, a bit like the ones used for old 3D movies, and the game's graphics are shown in the same colours. This forces them to use their dominant and weaker eyes together, which will hopefully improve vision. The government's backing plans to build a spaceport in the UK by 2018. If it happens, it'll become the first spaceport in Europe and will offer commercial space travel and ultra-fast international flights. Five potential sites are in the running, Campbelltown, Glasgow and Stornoway in Scotland, Newquay in England and Llanbedder in Wales. You might have put together a flat-pack wardrobe before, but how about a flat-pack go-kart? Well, a team in the US has created a prototype made from plywood. It's not quite as quick as putting together furniture, though. You'll have to set aside a whole day to finish the job. They're looking for around £23,000 of funding through Kickstarter. And from one Kickstarter project to another, a gadget that claims it can turn into any instrument you want it to be hit its funding goal of £49,000 this week in just over five hours. The Artifon uses a touch-sensitive digital fretboard to create the notes and connects to smartphones, tablets or computers. A lot of time here at Mobile World Congress is spent looking at new handsets and finding out what they can or cannot do. And for gamers, one of the most important things that new phone might have is the ability to play bigger and better games. So, here's a rundown of some of the newest titles. Agent Alice is a hidden object game for iPhone and iPad and it kind of says what it does on the tin really. You get presented with a scene and a list of things that you have to find in it and if you find these things very quickly you rack up more points. Um, it's got beautiful artwork, it's this 1960s vibe. It's just quite a nice easy going puzzle. Game's free so it's always worth a go but if you're just looking for something that's nice and relaxing to maybe play on a tube journey or something it's, it's a good game. Alto's Adventure is an endless runner game, so it's just, you know, keep going until you die, basically. And you play as a llama shepherd, Alto, uh, and you have a snowboard, and you're it's snowboarding down a hill, and you're, you're basically corralling all of your lost llamas. Uh, but while you're doing it, it's, you uh, grind on things like bunting, you grind on tables, do tricks and backflips. And it's one of those games where everything just works works right and looks great and the music's lovely it's kind of a zen-like experience and it's a really nice game to just sort of have a crack at and see have a go for a couple of minutes and then put to one side and maybe come back to and try and beat your score dark echo is quite an unusual game in that it's a horror game but you can't see what you're afraid of so it's basically like coining in on the are you afraid of the dark the screen's pitch black and by moving your character your footsteps create these kind of sonar, these lines that come out from you, and they kind of crudely map out the area you're in. It's one that's best played when you're sort of in, maybe even in the dark yourself, but wearing headphones and just totally immersed in it, and it's, it's a really great find. For fans of games like uh, Wipeout and F-Zero, we've now got this iPad equivalent, which is AD Drive, and there have been a few, but this one is really great, it really looks the part. So you're basically controlling this hovercraft around a really futuristic looking racetrack. And honestly, it's one of the best looking games out there on, uh, on the iPad at the moment. And you can either use tilt controls to control your hovercraft or you can use touchpad controls. It's quite a difficult game. It's not very forgiving, but you do kind of get, in, get the hang of, you know, using your speed boosts properly, trying to race against other people. Um, it's a lot of fun. Your car can also come with uh, special kind of power-ups so you can either jump or you can have this turbo boost that's really useful because if, like me, you always find yourself at the far end of the pack, you can zip past people. And it's very, it's a quite a nice, just sort of gratifying experience. AG Drive. Make always deeds. Well, that's it for this week. Remember, you can keep up to date with all the breaking tech stories throughout the week on Sky News for iPad, our smartphone applications, and at skynews.com. From Martin Stanford in Barcelona, 
goodbye. Gotcha. Ah, oh, that's better. Protectyourbubble.com. Proud sponsors of Swipe on Sky News.